So if you want to tell that story, man, sure. of having this divine yeah. encounter through music and the angelic, man, it'd be awesome. I'll, I'll be happy to share that. That was, uh, it's not the only time that's happened, but it was the most, you know, here's the cool thing is that when something happens, that's not premeditated. I mean, that day, you know, um, when this experience happened was just a normal day. We had got there early, Jason and I, a couple of guys in the band, we were playing basketball with some of the youth pastors. It was just a normal day, bro. You know, it, it's like, that's why we're just, it, like John Weber said, you know, we're just a bunch of fat people trying to make it to heaven. I mean, we, we make ourselves great, but God's great. And so we were just having a normal goofy day. And uh, we did sound check. And when we did sound check, at one point, all my hair on my arms stood up. And I didn't, I didn't know why. I just thought, wow, that was just really awesome. And um, one of my jobs, besides being kind of a mentor as well as an engineer and setting up, you know, our stuff to record almost every concert, was to also play guitar. And we started playing that night, and it probably wasn't 30 minutes into the set that Jason gave me the look from the keyboard, like, unplug your guitar and get out there. And the reason he wanted me to unplug my guitar it was to make sure that I went all the way back to the soundboard to make sure that we were actually getting this recorded because that was my other job. So even though I didn't want to disconnect from the worship, that was still part of worship. So I walked all the way down the aisle and, and I was kneeling underneath the so uh, sound console where my pre uh, uh recorder was. And I noticed the levels were strong and, and it was good. And by the time I was getting ready to go back up on stage, I turned around and this this little boy comes up the aisle to talk to me. He goes, hey, mister. <laughs> and I said, yeah. And he goes, did you see him? And I'm like, what? Did you see him? I said, did I see? She goes, he goes, the angel, he's got to be 12 feet tall. And he's standing right behind Jason right now. And I'm like, and he walks away. And I'm thinking, I'm feeling so much God in this room. And, and I look up on stage and Jason all of a sudden throws his head back. And I hear this sound. The most unbelievable sound I've ever heard. It was, I mean, we had Micah and different guys that, I mean, all of us have decent voices that have range, but this was in a whole other stratosphere, this voice. It was like almost like a harmonic of where our voices would be. And I'm thinking, what's going on? And all of a sudden I look up on top of the stage and I start seeing smoke. It's the first time I've ever seen this. I start seeing smoke. And we obviously we know that we, we don't want to get overexcited, you know, you know, but a lot of times that's the beginning of the appearance of the glory of God. And so I found the janitor just to be safe because it was, it was getting thicker from the top way up. And I said, there's smoke coming in up there. I said, could that be a fire or whatever? He said, son, there's nothing that could be on fire up there. He goes, I don't know what that is. He goes, don't worry about it. So I thought if he doesn't know what it is, I think I do. And, uh, then all of a sudden that angel started singing and I jumped under the soundboard, <laughs> literally underneath the soundboard. And I'm just sitting there going, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Oh my. I couldn't believe what was, and all these guys that we were just goofing with in the day, like all these pastors that were kind of ambivalent, they're laying man down. Uh, and then Jason just starts this crazy babble is the best word I can say is babbling. Ah, da, da, ah. And he's speaking like in an infant's, you know, first language. It's like this interval that we all say, daddy. And, and he starts going there and I'm thinking, he looks like he's completely lost his mind right now. And I got excited because I knew if he lost his mind, that meant that <laughs> it was the mind of Christ taking over. And so anyway, make a long story short, I don't remember ever a time in my life where I saw that much of God or actually heard an angel sing before. So I immediately after the session, I mean, uh, this is really funny. I started packing up Jason's stuff and he's staring straight ahead. And finally I'm going, he goes, Hey, Hey dude. And I said, are you okay? And he goes, Oh, I'm more than okay. And I said, wait a minute, you're drunk. <laughs> you're drunk in the spirit. And he goes, I haven't drank anything. And he's falling off his stool. He's so <laughs> like, you talk about in trance. He was so in yeah. God, that he was having trouble coming out to come back in. He was in two places at once. Bam. And, and, and that's not weird, is it? And we are now seated in heavenly places come with Christ now. Jesus. And I'm also seated in my office talking to my friend at the same time. But he was really, he was more on that side than the other. And he was having a hard time coming back in to have a normal human conversation. And he really acted like a drunk dude. So much so that when I packed his stuff up and I'm literally like 
helping, you know, a guy like an old man. I got my arm around him. I'm walking him because he's stumbling. And uh, I'll never forget this. He he tells the promoter guy, he goes, hey, can I borrow your car? And I'm saying, don't let him drive. Don't let this guy drive, whatever you do. <laughs> and he hands him the keys. And Jason gets behind in a beautiful Range Rover. And we're all in the in the truck and he's driving, which I'm already a little nervous about. And he floors it. And there's like these at this at this college, there's logs that you park up in front of. Like he goes flying oh, goom, goom, <laughs> over the logs and the pastor's watching. I'm thinking, oh, God. So he gets the munchies. I'm serious. He was stoned. So we go to Taco Bell and he goes in the wrong way in the window. So I'm so it's on my side now. He went the oh, wrong wow. way. His <laughs> car's headlights in front of us. And, and so we're ordering this nasty food and whatever. And I'm just like, this guy is completely. So we get on the highway and it's 70 mile an hour speed limit. And he's driving 35. I'm not kidding you. And I finally said, Jason, he goes, dude, dude. He starts getting frustrated. I got it. I got it. I said, you're driving 35 and a 70. Can you give it a little? I mean, you flew over a log, but now you. So we get back to the place. We get back to the um, to the college where we're staying that night. And I notice that this guy's out on his feet and I've got the recorder uh, over my shoulder. I've got one arm around him and I and we're rooming together. So he walks into the room. Usually what would happen is, you know, obviously we get cleaned up and go to bed or whatever. He lays down on the bed in his jacket with with his his man bag on it and falls asleep and he's out. I can't wake him up. He just falls man down right in the bed. I thought that's cool. And I sit down and I got the headphones in the recorder listening back. And when it hits that angel part, I mean, I'm crying so hard. I, I, I didn't want to wake him up, but I, I, yeah. I, I lost it. And then in the morning I'm sleeping and he's up listening and he's going, waking me, dude, dude, you recorded an angel. And so long story short was that that was the first time that I ever captured that. And when I was actually mixing the project in Nashville, a very close friend of mine to this day and a great engineer, I told him about it and he was like beyond skeptical. He was like, oh, it's probably just some psychoacoustic anomaly or whatever. Angels don't sing on tape and blah, 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 blah. And you didn't record him on hard drive. And I, 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 so I said, okay. So we go to that spot in it's the songs called Fly on the remember album and and we go to that spot on the project and he hears it and he goes like this then he goes that's ah, some kind of feedback or something i said okay then why don't you just start you know going one by one through all the tracks and solo them out so he started with the drums and what he thought it was a drum tom tom and anyway we go all the way through and i said well i just remember this kid telling me that there was an angel singing behind jason and he was 12 feet tall and probably about seven feet behind him and i said why don't you solo jason's mic mic track and <laughs> it's impossible in the natural there's one waveform from one instrument that vocal channel had two waveforms jason's normal vocal and a skinny patch of a high frequency sound that sounds like it was imaged behind him and when he heard that and saw that he goes let's take a break and he went and sat outside in his carport and just cried his eyes out. He said, wow. my God, you just recorded an angel. Wow, <laughs> man. You know, he was he was drunk, intoxicated on that new wine. That's what we call it, man. Absolutely it's something gone. about like spiritual experiences like that change you, don't they? Don't don't they like create a, a you know, just like a plumb line or just this place that you always remember like what's possible and you and the beautiful thing is now that you know that you can you can go back there you can revisit a similar experience in your mind and your thoughts your frequency right because even hearing that song brings back memories 